5 True Facts About Tarzan That You Don't Know 5. Edgar Rice Burroughs Killed Jane The first actress to play Jane Porter was Enid Markey in Tarzan of the Apes. Unfortunately, Ms. Markey was a brunette, which went against Burroughs's image of Jane. In the novels, Jane is actually a blonde. She isn't British, either. She's actually from Maryland. It didn't help that Burroughs hated Marquis's performance. In fact, he supposedly hated it so much that he killed off Jane in his next story. In the first chapter of Tarzan the Untamed, Tarzan is away from home when World War I breaks out. When he returns, he finds that German soldiers have looted and burned his home, killing many of his servants and friends in the process. And shockingly, they've murdered Jane. As Burroughs puts it, for a long time Tarzan stood there just looking down upon the dead body, charred beyond recognition, and then he stooped and lifted it in his arms. As he turned the body over and saw how horribly death had been meted he plumbed, in that instant, the uttermost depths of grief and horror and hatred. Nor did he require the evidence of the broken German rifle in the outer room, or the torn and blood-stained service cap upon the floor, to tell him who had been the perpetrators of this horrid and useless crime. For a moment he had hoped against hope that the blackened corpse was not that of his mate, but when his eyes discovered and recognized the rings upon her fingers the last faint ray of hope forsook him. It's a tragic scene, and it launches Tarzan on a brutal quest for vengeance. The ape man hunts down and kills every German soldier he can find, whether they were involved or not. It's a departure for Tarzan, whose actions are usually very noble. Of course, Jane wasn't really dead. She wasn't even mostly dead. Since the story was published as a serial, Burroughs changed Jane's fate before the final chapter, although no one is sure why. At the end of the story, Tarzan discovers that Jane was abducted. 4. Tarzan auditioned for a Tarzan movie. Edgar Rice Burroughs had a love-slash-hate relationship with Hollywood. He loved the exposure and extra income, but he hated the way movies changed his character. He particularly disliked Elmo Lincoln, the first movie Tarzan, who was afraid of heights. Lincoln was also a beefy man with a 132cm, 52in, chest in contrast to the lean, athletic Tarzan of the books. Nor was Burroughs happy with Johnny Weissmuller, pictured above, the most famous movie Tarzan. He wanted Tarzan to be articulate, but Weissmuller's version could barely speak English. The author took out his frustration in Tarzan and the Lion Man. In this novel, our hero rescues a movie crew filming in the African jungle. Along the way, Burroughs mocks the actors, directors, and movie making in general. But the coup de grace comes in the last chapter. After his adventure, Tarzan visits Hollywood, and he's taken to meet a casting director. 3. Tarzan Knows Martial Arts A man who is strong and agile enough to wrestle great apes probably doesn't need more of an edge, but he has one anyway. According to Joe Lansdale's authorized novel, Tarzan, The Lost Adventure, the ape man once visited the Shaolin Temple to study Kung Fu. For this list, though, we're going to limit ourselves to the Burroughs novels. So did Edgar Rice give Tarzan martial arts skills? Well, in The Beasts of Tarzan, Burroughs talks about this in a general way. With a low snarl the beast now hurled himself at Tarzan, but the ape man had found, among other things in the haunts of civilized man, certain methods of scientific warfare that are unknown to the jungle folk. Whereas, a few years since, he would have met the brute rush with brute force, he now sidestepped his antagonist's headlong charge, and as the brute hurtled past him swung a mighty right to the pit of the ape's stomach. 2. Tarzan and Jane are immortal. In Tarzan's quest, the ape man comes into conflict with the Kobiru, a hostile tribe that's terrorizing the jungle and stealing women. They even kidnap Chain. It also turns out that the Kaviru are immortal, having developed a pill that grants them eternal youth. In Chapter 28, the Kaviru High Priest explains to Jane, You can serve the only purpose for which women are fit. Man may only attain godliness alone. Woman weakens and destroys him. Look at me. Look at my priests. You think we are all young men. We are not. A hundred reigns have come and gone since the latest neophyte joined our holy order. And how have we attained this deathlessness? Through women. We are all celibates. Our vows of celibacy were sealed in the blood of women, in our own blood will we be punished if we break them. 
it would be best for a Kahira priest to succumb to the wiles of a woman. Jane shook her head. 1. Tarzan flew to the center of the earth. In addition to the Tarzan books, Burroughs wrote several other series, including the Felicidar novels. In these stories, adventurers David Innes and Avner Perry build an experimental drilling machine and discover the earth is hollow. In fact, it's even lit by an interior sun. This world is inhabited by dinosaurs, primitive humans, and a large variety of intelligent, non-human races. In Tarzan at the Earth's core, the ape man and a small group of companions go in search of Innes and Perry. Tarzan uses his wealth to finance the construction of a special dirigible called the O220. Using this huge flying machine, they travel through a gigantic hole at the North Pole, and by passing through the tunnel, they end up in the center of the world. The idea of a hollow Earth is an actual pseudo-scientific idea that's been around since the 18th century. It's not clear if Burroughs took this idea seriously, but he certainly found it useful in his fiction. In fact, this concept wasn't just limited to the Earth. In his novels The Moon Maid and The Moon Men, the moon is also hollow and contains several ancient civilizations. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. Best 5 Video.